You're listening to the National Oceanography Center's Into the Blue podcast, where we tackle some of the biggest questions facing our ocean today by speaking to experts and voices from the world of oceanography. Hope you enjoy today's episode. Hi, I'm Will, and today I'm joined by Liz James and Phil Bishop to talk about the formation and the impact of the Bora Blue Ocean Research Alliance. Thanks for joining us today, Phil and Liz. Thanks for having us. So, to start off, should we just give a quick introduction to, to yourselves and what sort of the companies you're representing? Sure. Okay. So I'm Phil Bishop. I work here at the NOC um, as a in the commercial development team. Uh, that, broadly speaking, looks after things like industry partnerships, setting up new products and services with our with our core science and engineering teams, and also looking after the technology transfer operation that we have. So trying to commercialise our new inventions, really. And my role within this kind of Bora specific conversation is the NOC lead as well. Great, Liz. Hi, um, yeah, so I'm Liz James. Um, I work for Subsea 7 at the moment, but I've always been involved with the ocean. I'm actually a subsea engineer and professional diver, um, but I've been working for Subsea 7 for about 16 years um, as the uh, now working as the environmental director for the company, trying to change our impact from not having a, a negative impact to a more of a positive impact, which is, which is great, interesting work. Great. So... Bora Blue Ocean, Blue Ocean Research Science then, can you give us a bit of background about how it formed and what, what the motivations were behind it and what steps you had to take to, to form that alliance? Well, maybe I want, do you want if I start with what sub, who Sub-7 are? Yeah. So, so sub C 7 are actually, um, so we're industry as opposed to obviously NOC being science and we actually um, are a global leader um, in offshore um, energy company. So we're predominantly oil and gas but we also are working on new energies transitioning to lower oil and gas, and we work on a fixed wind and floating wind. Um, we're a company of about 14,000 employees with about 30 vessels that works globally to depths of water about 3,000 metres. And um, we have about 120 ROVs. So we have a, a huge global deep water reach, which is why in all the locations where we work, we wanted to do more than just the construction work. You know, with, with everything that's going on with the environment, we wanted to join forces with, with a scientific research body um, to be able to then make the most of the locations that we go, which scientists rarely go to, to be able to, to provide some you know, data and information where we're working. And so. From our perspective, the, as you know, there's loads and loads of different stakeholders within the ocean environment. There's the research side, like NOC, there's industry, there's all sorts of people. So we wanted to build a, a tool for helping people work together with that. And we think we've done that pretty well with Bora. So w we do a lot of research within this building and our ships and the, the Liverpool campus, but we're never going to have the global reach that a big industry player like Subsea 7 is going to have. So we wanted to set something up that utilises their strengths and our strengths and bring that together. And not least because we're now an independent charity and a lot of the kind of traditional research grant work is not funded at full costs. So you have to subsidise that and that's not a, a, a good way to go if you're relying purely on that for obvious reasons. So working with industry brings together all these different stakeholders and helps us actually do the high impact science work that we would want to be doing anyway. It's one ocean. We want to bring everyone together to try and contribute to that and we think we found it a good way of doing it. Yeah, and obviously the motivations are aligned from, from both sides to, to form that. Were there, were there any challenges in, in forming the alliance at all? Like, it's, is it a bit of a process, a, lot, a longer process to do, or was it well, something I, that felt? So we first, Phil and I first started talking um, during lockdown. Um, I was approached by one of our execs asking us if we would find a partner to be able to form an alliance with. So we started talking um, during COVID-19, and... I think we soon realised that we were quite aligned on our values and what we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to be uh, innovative, we wanted to collaborate, and we really wanted to make a difference. So we then had some workshops um, with our execs and our senior scientists, well, well, the NOC senior scientists, and I think we, we started having discussions on how we could make this work. And we realised, I think, that because we are so aligned, that it was actually quite easy that we wanted to, to you know, to, to make this work. So I think it took a bit of a time with the workshops to iron out how we would do it, you know, the legal agreements. Um, but we've ended up with a, a not-for-profit alliance. So this is, you know, not profit making in any way. If anything, you know, as you say, NOC are registered charities. So for us, it was to try and help 
the registered charity with uh, you know with the areas that we go we, we uh, that we work in. Yeah, and it's, it's, we've had a lot of interactions with Subsea Seven historically, such as through a project called Serpent. So we we sort of knew a bit about what each other did, and Bora's in a way followed on from some of that Serpent work where Subsea Seven and other partners were sending some video and image data from their ROVs, for example, but this is taking it to a whole new level, really. But there's still loads of challenges that we've had to work through and still do to a lesser extent. The, the main one is probably that the NOC, being a, a research institute, our currency is almost, uh, well, research papers rather than yeah. actual kind of hard cash, basically. Um, so kind of the schedule and the, the revenue driven industry side of it is very different to how we operate and it impacts everything yeah. from how we actually work day to day, how we plan our future operations, our future projects. So it's been quite a lot of work to yeah. try and find out what your drivers are, what our drivers are, how we work, how Subsea 7 yeah. work and everything. But it's gone well, it's definitely taken some time to, to establish that and that's kind of why we hope that Bora can actually act like a bit of a tool for other partners to, to work together because it has been a bit of a journey to be yeah. honest. Oh, great. So, well, so, so actually just to add to, to complement that, I'd say it was once Subsea 7 realised the drivers of the scientists that it is to try and produce some really high valuable scientific papers. So every project that we choose has got to be something which has really got a high scientific value. And I think once we realise that and we obviously adapt to be able to develop it because not every project is going to produce um, output, but yeah. I think, but what it will produce is obviously then developments in that research area. And I think, so it's for us, it was uh, for clients and supporters who, who have joined us, it's telling them that it's all about managing their expectations, that um, they're not necessarily going to have 12 months of physical data, but they are working to develop the research and the scientists, you know, and the work that we do. So I think it was definitely understanding each other was a big part of it which and we're still on the journey yeah. and we, we will continue to be yeah yeah mm. so obviously the alliance has been formed for a few years now so be able to give us some details of some of the sort of success stories of Bora so far and what what insights we've got from some of the work that, that we've done as part of that alliance yeah yeah i can go first the um we're working on a project at the moment in the black sea which has hit that really nice sweet spot for us of really high impact science relevant to industry, it's, it's brilliant really. So there's a bit of background. There was a, a significant flooding event in the Black Sea or on land around the Black Sea in Turkey. And then very soon after there was a really big earthquake and that those two events have caused a huge influx of sediment, as you'd imagine, down into the deep sea. And with that, a whole load of infrastructure has been taken with it at kilometers. So a long way it's caused a lot of destruction, but that, area of science there's very little kind of real data for us to work with and actually observe so to be able to obtain that data for scientific use is has been really really impactful and we've been able to work out huge amounts about how carbon goes down into the deep ocean where it comes from the rates that it goes at all of this kind of good stuff and as well being in the black sea really saline environment so it's quite cool to be able to to witness that as it fills a nice gap between mm. lake environments and yeah. normal ocean environments so we've hit the jackpot with that one really and we hope <laughs> to be able to publish that quite soon right Liz. and i'd say well another really significant project for us has been one that's called the bora box where we actually that was our initial project that we started with where we fitted um sensors onto our rovs remotely operated vehicles um, we have a fleet of about 120 RVs, so we, we started fitting the sensors on, which is technology which the NOC have developed called lab on a chip sensors. And we decided, and this is actually to measure essential ocean variables, and we've, we've chosen to look at the ones um, for climate change, because people understand that, the ocean acidification. And um, so we, we fitted um, the RVs with pH, alkalinity sensors and CTD. And we started on a prototype project in the west of Shetland and started getting you know, data back. And you, you were asking about results or, or what we've seen. And I think so from that, we, we have seen slightly more acidic readings, but I think it's nothing conclusive to, to uh, just from the, the initial pro, um, borer boxes. So we've, we've invested in 11 borer boxes so far. And we are now, we've got borer boxes in Brazil We've got borer boxes in Norway, 
Um, we've got them in the UK, west of Shetland, and we're looking at sending them wider afield to Trinidad and to Australia to try and have that global reach of, you know, trying to get those sensors going to the depths of water of 3,000 metres to get this data. And um, I think it's been interesting results, um, but it, we're still working through them because the te technology is still being developed. Uh, but I think it's a, quite a successful project for us. But lots of learnings, <laughs> yeah. I think, to make them more robust for yeah. um, an industry application rather than just a research application. Yeah. So that's some of the challenges we're working yeah. on with the Bora Box at the moment. That's it's a great cool. example as well, that one, of a project that allows us to bring other partners in. So a lot of the other projects that you do, there's a, a really clear stakeholder, whereas the Bora Box... Subsea 7 have got over 100 ROVs. We've got one at the NOC. So you get to see the scale and why it's important to involve other people. But also, each one of those ROVs is working on a different site that's being run by a different energy company, for example. Mm -hmm. So we get to bring in lots more people to it, which kind of helps us with our, our main objective of yeah. bringing in yeah. new stakeholders, really. Yeah, I was yeah. actually just about to go on to the fact that these projects do you put or other organizations are pulled into yeah. that as well as so, so, to just so the one for example so the bora box in brazil for example that's been supported by equinor for three years which is great they were actually our fir first uh, client that came on board of us we've now got aqua bp supporting uh, one in norway we've got shell have joined us um, and we've got uh, bp in trinidad and we will have more clients helping us obviously and the more global and, and the the aim is to have the whole fleet fitted with these sensors and get as many clients involved so they can become, you know, start understanding the work we're trying to do to be part of that bigger global picture to, to get the, the, the research and the, the data that's much needed. Yeah. And the, the, the funding for those projects, do they come from those partners as well? Or where is sort of the funding? So, so for the Bora from? Box, we've been asking clients to come and help us. I think the funding of a lot of the other projects at this stage, it's still Subsea 7 funding them. Yeah. But we obviously, to be able to have that you know, wider reach, we will be asking supporters and clients to come and join us and help fund it. Um, and I, so I think they will be more eventually. There's also, maybe you want to talk a bit about the, because it's not just going to be funded by the client or by Subsea 7. The, the aim is also to, to apply for, for grants that we've been doing. And, uh, yeah, like a lot of the research work we do you need access to infrastructure and things to strengthen your bids and improve the, the quality of the work you're doing. So if we were able to write into a, a bid to, say, Innovate UK and say that we've got a fleet of 100 ROVs that we can put this stuff onto, straight away that you're, you're more likely to win it there. So we're hoping to be able to move over to be able to use that as a, a revenue stream more and more for more projects as we, as we start them. And also we've got a new PhD student starting soon that's been co-funded by Subsea 7, the NOC and university as well. Right. And that's going to be looking into one of our, our projects. So we're trying to spread it as far as we can, really, so that we're not relying on mm. any one type of person. Right. Yeah. Well, I, think, I think one of the more recent successes, I think, is the, the UN Ocean Decade endorsement. So do you want to tell us a bit about how that was awarded and sort of the impact that it's going to have on the alliance going forward and the, the research you're doing. Yeah. Do you want to go for that? Yeah, so well, I think so. So us now receiving the, the United Nations in you know, uh, Ocean Decade of, of Science accreditation or endorsement, sorry, is, uh, is huge for us. Obviously, I think it's recognising the significance of the work that we're doing as a company. Um, you know, it's one of the first industry and science uh, endorsements that the, that the UN uh, have done. And it's just, you know, hugely impactful for us um, that we have now been recognised to get that endorsement. Yeah. yeah. That helps us as well get new partners in again. But we've, our chief scientist, Andrew Gates, is going to um, the a meeting or a workshop with the programme that we've joined, which is DOOFS, the Distributed Ocean Observing Strategy. And that's full of new um, areas and new people and new networks that that Bora can now work with and feed our data into. All of our data as standard is, is feeding into the BODC, the British Oceanographic Data Centre, get my acronyms correct, <laughs> um, which is great, but it's the more and more that we can get it spread into the other networks, the better yeah. really. The whole point of it is to make data available to everyone, make yeah. science yeah. relevant and impactful. So the more of these kind of groups that we can get linked in with, the better. Yeah. And I think that is the whole point of Bora, that the data that we 
um, we, we gather, we want to share with the wider communities. We want to share, you know, with all the other scientists. We want to get the other institutes involved. So, for example, in Brazil, we are working with the institutes in, in, in Brazil. In Australia, the same. In Norway, the same. So we can try and the data that we will gather by the NOC will be shared wider with, a, with all the glo global you know, research institutes and universities, etc. And if they come to us telling us there's something specifically they want to look at, I think we're obviously assessing that to try and get as much impact really from, from the, the data that we're getting and the research that we're doing. Right. I think um, so in terms of, the, the, I think we may have sort of covered this a little bit at the start, but a lot of people when you know you hear like oh industry and research or an industry sort of industry focus company like Sub C seven then a research organization like NOC collaborating is kind of like if it's about research and innovation, I kind of think, oh well can't just the research organization do that. Do you wanna tell us a bit about why you felt like this partnership is necessary for mm. learning more about the ocean and increasing that knowledge? I think yeah. so so we've talked about this at length and especially in the early stage, when we, we first started discussing about forming this partnership, um, we, we did say, you know, we are predominantly oil and gas. As much as we do do renewables now with, with all the floating wind and, and everything else that we're doing on the carbon capture, etc. Um, we did discuss, I think, a conflict of interest. And I think and the, the fundamentals has got to be that the, the projects that we do have got to be of high scientific value. Yeah. And so that's why they're carefully selected. We're not just doing projects for the sake of saying we're doing projects. They've got to be valuable. So Phil's mentioned the Black Sea one. I've mentioned the Bora Box. There's quite a few other projects that we're doing as well of high value. And we will only do them if they're of high value. So the scientists are telling us what they want to do. And then we're working with where we, where we operate in the world in those depths that we want to get something quite valuable. And I think that's where anybody who's sceptical, you can just see by the value of what we're going to be producing and delivering that um, you know, I think they are projects that are really worthwhile to inform. Yeah, it's always the research yeah. coming first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of workshops with our science and engineering teams here to talk about. We're thinking of doing a project within the, the renewables arm under um, Seaway 7, for example. Like, what kind of project ideas have you got? We'll brainstorm some and hopefully something falls out from that. So yeah. we, we try and keep the focus on that research rather than it coming down the other way and saying, we've got this problem, can you help us solve it? Which could be done, but the yeah. whole point of Bora is yeah, to try and improve our ocean knowledge really, rather than answer questions from clients. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great bit to move on to sort of saying what's coming up. So in the sort of future of Bora, are there any exciting projects that are being worked on now that are in the pipeline that you can give us a bit of a teaser about yeah yeah we, we've got loads coming up now which is really exciting it took a, a little while to find our feet with finding the right projects and how to do them but we've done quite a few scoping studies to see if it's worth pursuing basically and one of them for example is um working with again the fleet of rovs that subsea 7 have got we've done a trial to take some push cores to get the the top layer of sediment samples up send them back to um our sediment facility here and make that information available for anyone that wants to look at cores around the world um, so we've done the trial and we want to spread that into a much wider group really so we've got a huge borer sediment research um, right. repository or whatever we want to call it that people can come in and use that's not a source of data that's readily available at yeah. all there's cores are taken in generally very specific places rather than everywhere that offshore operators are working so that's a really cool one um, we've got another one called Eyes in the Ocean, which we're starting up now, where the, the vessel teams from Subsea 7 are sending us photos and videos of things that they've seen that look interesting or might look out of place, and we can yeah. see what's there, basically inform what's there, and hopefully get some good information from it. So there's, there's all sorts of stuff coming up. We're always looking for new projects um, and to make the existing projects bigger, mm -hmm. like Bora Box at the moment. We've building our 11th borer box at the moment, but we'd like to make that bigger every every year, really. Um, uh, and I think it's probably um, interesting or important to add that the projects we're doing, we actually do in hidden operational time. And I think so everything that we're doing, I think the whole point to keep the costs down, we do it when we're doing other activities. So we may be doing some construction work and then we'll capture the images, for example, with the eyes in the ocean. For the sediment sampling that Phil's talking about, 
we've been doing it on our dive, dive support vessels. So when the divers are, for example, recovering back to the bell, because we have saturation divers um, that are working, they go back to the, well, to the bell and then the ROV goes and gets the sediment core and then it's recovering it to the deck. So I think to try and keep the cost down of the whole alliance and the work that we're doing, because I say it's a not-for-profit alliance, we want to do it in, you know, in parallel activity. For the borer boxes, we're recording data. As soon as the ROV goes in the water, it starts taking data, the essential ocean variables that we've chosen. And then it, when it comes back up to the surface, automatically the data is getting sent back to, the, to NOC straight away. So we take out a lot of the man hours, which would cost. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think, and that is the, one of the key things here for the Alliance to work, to keep the costs down, to try and automate it. The eyes in the ocean one, it's all digitalized now. So the images, they'll take the images and we send them back automatically to the scientists. So I think it's all about now trying to automate as much as possible as what we do to, to get yeah. the information to the scientists as cheaply and as quickly um, to them. And then they report back on what they find. So it keeps our yeah. people motivated on what the scientists say that they're seeing or what that they're doing. And I think it's, uh, that's, that's a key, I think, to the success to make sure we do it in, in uh, hidden operational time and as automated as possible. Yeah, it's cool as well because like, I'm a, an oceanographer by trade. Before I did this job, I was in a, a technical role. But now we get to have all of these workshops and meetings where we get <laughs> to sit down and think, well, what can we do there? So it's really up to us to think about anything that we think is relevant and interesting yeah. and is worth looking into. So I, I quite enjoy it on a personal front and there's a lot of things that kind of come come through and then might fall by the wayside if, if it doesn't quite work out but there's lots of cool things that does work out yeah. um so yeah watch this space but hopefully yeah. there's some good projects coming lots through. lots of really exciting stuff then so should we end on how people can get involved in bora yeah um so a program like bora box is a, a really easy way of saying how you can get involved because that's something that can just be copied and pasted to a new region around the world so that's something that people can help with New project ideas always welcome in terms of if you're company X and you want to look at this little thing on the seabed and you think Bora might have the infrastructure and expertise to help, then get in touch and we can try and spin up a project that might look into that. Um, we can help leverage funding, we can help with resources, the, the scientists and the engineers here at the NOC. So really, I, I guess just getting in touch with Liz or myself is probably the, the main thing and we can try and distribute things as best as possible really but it's all about building that model of working together so mm -hmm. yeah. if there's any of this that's useful for someone then we'd be happy to talk to people about what you've done right what you've done wrong what you can learn from really um but anything yeah. to add to that well, well i would say probably the biggest thing i've got from doing this alliance is a huge amount of satisfaction and i feel immensely proud that we're doing it yep. and from everybody who's involved with it especially from Subsea 7, because this isn't our core work, everybody's feeling immensely proud now that they are doing it. And I think it really is valuable. So I would highly recommend people either come and you know, work with us, support us, we develop more projects um, you know, that we're doing, or to, to form something similar, or you know, not, not necessarily you know, an alliance, but I think something that's going to make you feel proud and satisfied of what you're doing. You know, develop some ocean literature you know in in the meantime as well and i think then it makes you feel good that you're doing the right thing yeah we've actually been quite overwhelmed to be honest by the reaction from your team in a lot of those meetings where the cynic might think that this is just something that you've been asked to pursue but the whole subsea 17 have been brilliant with actually trying to engage with the science of it all rather than just doing yeah. the project for the sake of it and we do things like go into their kind of internal like uh, or training day kind of things. Um, and just hearing the questions that come back and things, it's good to see that they're getting involved without being asked to be involved, the, the people on the vessels, the people in the projects themselves. But hopefully that filters across to people outside of NOC and Subsea 17. Yeah. Great, yeah, well, we'll have a link in the description yeah. to the website as well if people want to find out more. Yeah, good. Um, but yeah, no, thank you so much for joining me today. It's really exciting. Alliance, and we look forward to seeing how it progresses in the future. But yeah, thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot, Will. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Will. If you're enjoying Into the Blue, please make sure you follow us on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss out on future episodes. New episodes are released every other Wednesday on all major platforms and are also available to watch on the NOC's YouTube. See you next time.